Video games and Lego go hand in hand, but Lego always seem to struggle to combine the two. So in this video, I'm going to be taking some of your favourite video games and turning them into sets. Everybody knows Smash Brothers, the game where characters from many different IPs come together to beat the crap out of each other. I love this game, so I thought it'd be fantastic to make one of my favourite maps, the Poke Arena. However, most of these maps in Smash Brothers are floating, which means we can't do a normal looking base like we usually do with these models. Instead, I'm going to start by building up a little black stand made of bricks and plates, and topping it off with these pieces to make it look like our main platform is floating. Speaking of the main platform, looking back at the game, there are loads of details, like the big Pokeball in the centre, and little yellow details and a black border. We are going to build up a little perimeter with plates and fill in most of the base with bright green tiles, obviously leaving a few studs exposed for the figures, platforms and that pokeball in the centre. And as for that pokeball in the centre, I think I'm going to use these macaroni tiles, as they don't really make many half round plates with tiles. This will also let me add in more details of the pokeball. And with that, the base is finished. But now we need to figure out how we're going to make these floating platforms, and right now, I just have no idea how the hell we're going to do that. So while I'm thinking about that, we're going to take a look at our next set, and as this video is sponsored by World of Warships, I thought I'd build a little model for them whilst I tell you a little bit of info about the game. World of Warships is a free-to-play naval shooter available for PC that lets you control some of history's most iconic war vessels. Choose from several ship classes including battleships, destroyers, cruisers, aircraft carriers, and submarines. With so much content to sink your teeth into, you'll be entertained for hours. World of Warships has been updated with new unbelievable water and dynamic weather effects that make the game feel super immersive. The game offers 40 unique maps, all made with high attention to detail, including 10 ports based on real historical ports. And now that our little base is done, and we can start building up our little ships, I want to tell you that World of Warships receives new content updates every week, with new missions and game events to keep you and your friends engaged for hours, and every month, even bigger content drops. Whether it's new ships, cosmetics, or in-game nations, you can always expect a fresh gameplay experience every time you play. And if you're not on PC, don't worry, they've got you covered. World of Warships is also available on consoles right now. You can join me in World of Warships by clicking the first link in the description to download it and use code WARSHIPS during registration to get some exclusive rewards for free. Thanks to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. I hope they enjoy their model and let's get back to making some more iconic video games. Oh, it's you. You know her? It's been a long time. The Portal series was one of my favourite video games growing up and although Half-Life may have been more popular, I can't think of a more iconic weapon than the Portal Gun. And believe it or not, LEGO have actually made a fair few portal bits in the past, so I'm really surprised we don't have an official set yet. Like all the other models we've done before, we're going to need a base, and I think I'm going to go a little bit smaller than I normally would with this model, as I think it's more important to show a bit of height with this small diorama. I'm going to go with a normal black plinth style base, it's 16 by 16 so it should be a good starting point. Reopening both games for the first time in a long time, I had to pick a scene to make, and as there are so many iconic moments in these games, it was really hard to pick. But I ended up deciding I wanted to focus on the character character of Shell and the portal gun itself instead of some major event going on in the game. I thought it might be cool to recreate the scene in Portal 2 where she finds the portal gun for the first time. So knowing the scene I wanted to make, I started by building up the floor in layers, starting with a bunch of dirt made by using dark tan and adding puddles of dirty water using trans brown to emphasise that the facility had really gone downhill since the first game. With the base somewhat finished, I started working on the height. I want this model to be taller than most I've done before and try and show off a little bit more of the rundown facility. Now to give us that height, I'm going to use these massive metal girder pieces, as we're going to need to use these for strength as I want to put a little walkway up here. Now you can't really have a portal set without, well, portals. And for anybody who's played the game would know, portals are very complex things. There's an orange portal and a blue portal. You shoot both of them on two different walls and they connect together, and for law reasons can only go on certain walls. So we need to build up some of these portal panels. So when building the portals out of LEGO, I obviously wanted to represent these colours, as you know they're kind of the most iconic thing about the game. And although I managed to get most of the pieces for these portals, there were two pieces of the orange portal that I found extremely difficult to obtain. The site I usually use to buy pieces didn't have any in my country, and the only ones available in existing sets were all above the £60 mark, and I wasn't spending £60 on two pieces. But thankfully there was one fairly recent set that did include those two orange pieces, and that set was the LEGO Video Dragon Beatbox. Thankfully, I did find a retailer that still had a couple of these in stock. Even though these sets are technically retired, I managed to get this for under £12. And although £12 might sound expensive for a few pieces, this model really wouldn't be complete without them. Now this model is looking really good, but it still needs that little something else to make it really feel like a portal set. 
I'm going to start by adding a lot more foliage to this model, like these leaves and tall grass pieces to make everything look overgrown, as well as that I need to make this look more like a test chamber with this button and lights leading up to this claw, as if this could have been used for some sort of test. Speaking of which, I think it's only right that we add a companion cube, one of the staples of the Portal franchise. As well as that we need our minifigures, yes, minifigures. The reason I wanted to have our portals with the hole in them is so we could take our minifigure, put her in the same pose across both figures, and position her on the model where she looks like she's going in one portal and coming out of the other. Let's check in with our Smash Brothers model. It seems we have a little bit of progress made in terms of the two additional platforms for the players to stand on, and we can use trans clear pieces to make these elevate above the main platform. But if I'm honest, looking at the model and the game side by side, I think it does need something else. And while I'm thinking of that, I think we've got time to slip one more model in here. And that reminds me, if you're still watching this video this far in, then you're clearly enjoying the content, so you might as well hit that subscribe button. And make sure you're hitting that bell, because my upload schedule is kind of all over the place at the moment. Subnautica, it's a game where you crash land on an alien world surrounded by nothing but ocean. Underwater, you'll find a world filled with danger and mystery, and in my opinion, would be perfect as a little Lego model. I'm going to do the classic thin base, as I don't think the base is going to be a super big focus of this model. I want to do a scene where the diver's looking on the ocean floor for some of his damaged ship, so he can get more materials to get himself home. As we're building an alien ocean, I'm going to start with the sand. Using a bunch of tan and dark tan pieces, I'm going to put them in a bunch of random places to try and build up the sand on the ocean floor. I looked through my entire parts collection to see if I could find anything that would be considered alien, and found a couple of pieces as well as an entire box of plants, and hopefully we can use these to make our underwater scene look a bit more lively. But let's be honest, you're not here to see me build up a bunch of sand. One of the most iconic and memorable vehicles in Subnautica is the Seamoth, a small yet powerful submarine that is a crucial component to the game. It's highly likely that players will be spending a significant amount of time exploring the vast underwater world of Subnautica in this vehicle, so it's a no-brainer that we'd include it on this model. Fortunately, a username Overraptor has already created a really impressive Seamoth design, and it's publicly available over on Bricklink Studio. With a couple of modifications to make it slightly more builder-friendly, this Seamoth will be a great addition to our Subnautica model. And with the Seamoth in there, the only thing we now need to do is add our minifigure. This basic model turned out fantastic, but I do think it's time to do a final checkup on our Smash Brothers model, and thankfully I identified what is missing. Looking back at the game, you'll see these lights on either side of the map, with this gigantic monitor in the centre. And I think adding all of these elements will definitely make this model feel a bit more complete. I'll attach these lights using Among Us pieces and 4L bars. It might not be the strongest connection in the world, but I definitely think it'll work for this. The only thing left to do now is add our minifigures. But that's just the thing, Smash Brothers has so many playable characters that it's really hard to decide who to pick. Thankfully, there are already a few that LEGO have made, like Minecraft Steve and Sonic. And they'll look good sat there on the main platform. But as I want this to be a 4v4 fight, we need two more characters. And for the other two, I want to get a bit more creative. First, we're going to have Mr. Game & Watch on this platform with his trusty hammer. And then on the other side, we'll have my favourite character here, Rob. I especially love the fire element as if he's jumping about to do a ground smash on the other players. It's just a shame we don't have a Mario reference in this model, but thankfully I've already done that in this video here, and you can click the screen now to watch it. See you there.